Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Saturday, March 30, 2024. I pray that you are in good spirit this morning and I pray that you are doing well as we rise to this new day and as we look forward to his blessing today. May we look to him who is the author and finisher of our faith. So our reading today, it comes to us from Acts chapter 1, reading verses 1 to 9. And it says, The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles, whom he had chosen, to whom also he shewed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father which said he, he have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but he shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the season which the Father had put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud receive him out of their sight. Amen. We thank God this morning for his word of wisdom. And as we continue to study, may he give us understanding and draw us nearer to him. Now, Acts chapter 1 is a very interesting chapter. It speaks to the event of Pentecost when the Holy Ghost descended upon the disciples while they were gathered at Jerusalem. Now, after Jesus' crucifixion, Jesus met with the disciples and he informed them before he left that they should remain in Jerusalem because he is going to give to them the promise or fulfill the promise to them that he, he had made that he would give them the Holy Spirit. Right? You remember that promise that he made? And so he told them, do not leave Jerusalem until I fulfill that promise. Now, this Jewish festival that was taking place in Jerusalem would have bring together different nations and different people from all over the region. And so, Jerusalem was the central point or place of worship. So, it means therefore that you would have had several different people there who spoke different languages and from different ethnic back background, as they would say. And so, while the disciples, they were in Jerusalem, of course, the promise was fulfilled. And the crowd gathered amazed to hear the disciples speaking in their own native language. So they were speaking in 
tongues. And I know there are some folks who believe that speaking in tongues has a different interpretation. But here we are told that tongue simply means another language. So if somebody from Spain come to speak to you and they are speaking in the language of Spain, they are speaking in tongues. If someone from the Hispanic community come and speak with you, they are speaking in tongue. Tongue simply means another language, nothing else. And that is why it is important that when we are speaking in another language, we must, not maybe, we must have an interpreter. Because nobody is going to sit down and listen to somebody that they cannot understand. That makes no sense at all. So that's what tongue really means, according to the Bible. Not man interpretation of what tongue is. Moving on. So, the scripture said that they were, were able, after the disciples were filled with the Holy Ghost. And they started to speak and they started to preach it was a powerful movement and a moment of worship and everyone was experiencing the power and the movement of the Holy Ghost as these men preach. They were declaring the wonders of God and their experience with Jesus and all that they went through with him. And so they were simply sharing with the people what they themselves have experienced and what Jesus told them. Now, at first when Jesus came to them and t told them to remain in Jerusalem, their first thought was, Jesus, are you coming to restore Israel? Are you coming to give back power to Israel? And Jesus said, that is not important. It is not important for you to know the time or to know the season. And that is something that you have a lot of us are so caught up with. Time and season. Time and season. Time and season. But that's not for you and I to know. You and I is to make sure that we are ready to receive the gift at all times. So whenever the time come, whether it's early or it late, we are already ready to receive it. And so that is why we must not wait till we see certain events happening around us to look for the coming of Christ or to prepare ourselves. We should be preparing ourselves at all times. So that way, there's nothing that will take us off guard. The Bible says that only a wicked and rebellious people look for signs. And take that in context. Is not that sign are so bad. Because the Lord gives sign to many people. But that should not be our central focus so he's not saying that it is such a bad thing and he should put it out of mind completely but what he's saying is that we are so caught up with wanting to know what you're gonna do next or what you you're gonna do at this time are you gonna do this are you gonna do that god do as he please because he's god and when he feel the time is right you know you and i as I said earlier, should only make sure that we are ready so that whatever God do in that appointed time is not something that is going to cause us to be shut out from Him. Do we understand? So understand this point of time in context. So I'm not saying that time is a bad thing. I'm just saying, 
helping us to understand that what is relevant for us to know, God will let us know at the appointed time. Even Daniel, he told when he gave Daniel the vision, he said, look here, this vision is not for now. So seal it up until the appointed time. So you see, when the time is right. So that's enough explanation for that. I think you get the picture. So the Holy Ghost came on these men and they spoke in tongues. People heard them in language. People were converted over 3,000. A whole lot of folks gave their heart to Christ. And the Lord promise us also that he is going to do the same thing that he did on the day of Pentecost then in Jerusalem just before he comes again. He said that he's going to pour out his what? Spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters will what? Have vision and dream. They will prophesy again. So the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that is promised will be poured out once more. And so we need to remain figuratively in Jerusalem until that promise is fulfilled. Okay? And so when that happens, then the gospel will, will set off in a blaze of glory like it never did before so you think the gospel is spreading now wait until that time come it's gonna spread like wildfire and that's a powerful thing to look forward to that's a promising thing to look forward to and this outpouring that first outpouring of the holy spirit was the start or the beginning of the evangelical Christian movement. So in a in a in a manner of speaking, you can say this is was this is was this was when the church started officially, if you want to look at it from that direction. Right? So that was the the the, the launching off of the gospel and then the disciples they disband and they spread and the gospel spread and so it shall be again amen and so may we and so as we continue to look for this outpouring of the holy spirit may we continue to prepare our vessel to receive this holy spirit or to receive the Holy Spirit so that when the Holy Spirit come upon us we can tell the world that Jesus is mighty to save and he's coming again may God continue to bless us and keep us faithful until his soon return amen <music>